Hi team, it's Cam and it is time for the live Q&A. As you know, we have questions here. Every week we have this. If you're watching this on YouTube, welcome. If you're here for the first time, my name is Cam Duvedi. I'm the founder of Premier Property and we are going into deep questions all about how you can invest in property and how you can develop. So uh, these questions are from our Premier Property Inner Circle community. Many of the people that are watching this right now live and this is recorded and played on YouTube. And if you're enjoying these Q&As, remember that you can subscribe by clicking on that bell icon to make sure you get the latest notifications. And at the same time, you can subscribe to make sure that you get the Q&As on a regular basis delivered to you, to your inbox, uh, all through YouTube. So uh, first question I've got here, I've got three questions actually. So um, I'm going to go into the first one here. And uh, this question is all about, you know, it says here, do councils take account of restrictive covenants from the land registry, such as no extensions can be made to a house or no flats built on the site when granting planning permission? So do councils take uh, uh, note of restrictive covenants? And the answer for this one very easily and very quickly is absolutely yes. Something that you want to be aware of is specific covenants whenever you're doing planning and so on. One of the ways that these will show up is through searches. So uh, when you get a uh, land registry search done, when you get, when you get a, uh, a council authority search even, uh, you will find if there's any restrictions of any kind uh, imposed by the council uh, or any restrictions on that property, they will be outlined. So you do need to know about those and you do require those for planning. Uh, when granting planning, so you need to be aware of those. Planners might give you a planning, uh, however, if there's any restrictions that you've got to adhere to, then you know, when you actually go into the building of that property, uh, when building regulations get involved, uh, it means that um, those things will be picked up if they haven't already been picked up for the planning process. So please do be aware of those. Um, kind of things that we've come across uh, from the council, for example, so I remember purchasing a property where there was actually a restriction on there because the previous owner hadn't adhered to some uh, regulations, uh, which uh, the council, so basically the council had been around, the neighbours had complained, there was you know, some really basic stuff really, there was you know, gutters that were um, you know, needed changing and there was vegetation in the gutters, which was meaning that uh, you know, the water was coming in, there's water ingress coming into the property, council came around, they said can you rectify it, uh, it wasn't rectified, neighbours complained, they asked again can you rectify it, the owner didn't to rectify it, so what happened? Um, the council put a restriction on there to ensure that the work was done um, and uh, they put an order against that. So, you know, things like that can happen. Um, the work was done, restriction was removed and we bought that property. So, uh, so I know you're asking a slightly different question here. Uh, I believe this is Anna. Uh, a slightly different question here, but I hope that makes sense. So, you know, these restrictions need to be uh, removed, yes. Moving forward to the second question. Second question is from uh, Andy Jones. Andy Jones, by the way, I'm reading these over here, just off the cuff, as usual. And uh, Andy Jones is asking, what is an approximate price I would expect to pay a solicitor to look through an auction legal pack uh, for a one bedroom leasehold flat? Thanks, says Andy. Well, Andy, it really depends on your relationship. So if you are starting a new relationship with a solicitor, then um, you know, typically the figure should be around, you know, if you're looking at a legal pack, you, know, you, could, you, could, you could pay up to about 200 pounds is reasonable. 100 to 200 pounds is a reasonable amount of money that a, a reasonably, uh, reasonable conveyancing solicitor, a very good conveyancing solicitor, uh, will help you to look for that legal pack because the information is already there. You know, they've got the searches, they've got the documentation to go through, and what they're doing is they're, they're of, of course, giving it a once-over and making sure that the legal pack is correct. So 100 to 200, 200 pounds for that. As you start to build a relationship, as you start to buy property or find property for other people, where you're dealing with those solicitors even more so, then what you'll find is the solicitor might even just turn around and just, to be fair, just look, look at it for you just because you're, you're doing business with them. So once you've done you know, one or two transactions with them, um, or like us, you might be doing several transactions a month, then it just because you're giving them you know, constant business, um, they'll have an easy, easy look through. If there's something a bit complicated, it takes more time, 
then like I say, 100 to 200 pounds is what they'll charge. So Andy, hope that helps. And it's a very good point because you should always, always, always be getting your legal pack checked uh, by the solicitor. Uh, the mistake that many investors do uh, make is that they, they try to second guess what's written in the legal pack. And if you're, if you're like me and you're a property uh, entrepreneur, but you're, you're not a solicitor, then you, know, it, 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 you can miss things. So really important that you get a professional in your field to look at the solicitor, the jargon that's in there. Um, I'll give you a specific case that happened to us um, you know, literally last month where we actually bought a property from uh, the modern method of auction. Something we can discuss another day. If there's something that you're interested in, comment below and you know, I'll share that with you on our next video. Okay, Just let me know if you want to know more about that. So modern method of auction and everything was great. You know, the, the agents were rushing us. The auction company was saying, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. We did everything, got it to the point of exchange. And, and then what happens? It comes out in the woodwork that, uh, not actually the property's woodwork, metaphorically speaking. No, it comes out in the, in the woodwork that, you know what? Actually, there is a person named on that property, uh, the gentleman's ex-wife, who shouldn't be on the title deeds, who needs to be removed from land registry, and now that slow down and we're waiting for that to be removed. We're, we're ready to proceed. However, that has to be removed. Now that, why do I mention this? Well, that would have only been picked, that only got picked up by my conveyancing solicitor when I showed them the legal pack. So we well, have a look for yourselves. Always give it to your solicitor. You know, use the right people for the right job. You know, entrepreneurs, learn from entrepreneurs, estate agents, find properties, solicitors, look at the due diligence and get the conveyancing part done, accountants, know the numbers, you get me, right? So use the right, right team, right member of the team for what you actually want them to do. So we at Premier Property always use conveyancing solicitors when looking at legal packs because there's always some jargon in there that um, needs clarifying. So thank you Andy for a really good question there. Next up, we have Catherine Vo. So we've got a number of our Premier Property Inner Circle members watching this right now. I'm just going to give you a quick wave before we go into Catherine's question. It's a very good question, actually. Very interesting, very relevant question. We've got Diane watching us here right now. Hi, Diane. Give us, feel, feel free to give us a wave. Smiley face. One of those emojis. Anyone you like. Cecilia's joining us as well. We have Nilesh Shah as well. And so many people watching, pretty cool. Okay, so Catherine always likes to acknowledge people that are watching and taking the time to watch this and really move forward in property. So next up, we have Catherine. So Catherine's asking, what are some of the pros and cons of buying a, uh, a situ property? So Catherine, um, what I'm uh, calculating, estimating from what you're saying here is tenants in situ. If that's right or that's right, if you're here, feel free to give me a little wave and say yes or something. Um, but that's my calculated assumption. That's what you're, you're wanting to know. Bit of a relaxed vibe today. Yeah. Okay. Right, Catherine. So let's answer your question. Well, one of the ways that you can actually build a discount when buying property is by having a tenant in situ. And another way that you can minimize your voids and maximize on your income is also by having a tenant in situ. So let's discuss both of these. So in a property where you've got a bad tenant, now we buy a number of these properties uh, and I'll explain why. So you've got a tenant in there which is a, which is a bad tenant or a so-called bad tenant and you know they're not paying the rent, they're being awkward and so on. You know, in my experience, what that usually means is that they've just been disrespected by the landlord. The landlord hasn't done the maintenance. They haven't fixed the properties. They've, the tenants asked for something to be fixed. They've ignored it and ignored it. And it's gone on for months and months and months. And the, the tenants usually quite tired of that. And they want to get a result. Hopefully you're following me here with what I'm saying. So the normal conversation that we have, my team has, I still keep my hand in a conversation I have with people. Because remember, we're in a people oriented business, I'll ask the tenant, is there anything that needs fixing your property? You know, why is it that you haven't paid the rent? I'll just ask them directly. 
oh, well, my, you know, they'll come up with something like, oh, you know, well, my landlord, I need to fix this, and they ignored it, and the boiler had, it hasn't been working for, you know, a number of weeks, and they, 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 you know, we need hot water, and we have to get it done ourselves, and they come up with a whole lot of, you know, a whole lot of reasons what's been going on. So, I normally say at that point is, if we buy this property, then we'll make sure that the property is maintained to a good standard, Provided you are paying the rent, we are happy to keep you here and treat it like your home. Now, what you'll find is that this conversation that you have with your tenants actually helps you and your tenant in situ, who was a problem, is no longer a problem. So, you buy that property where the, where the, where the seller is quite distressed because they think they've got a bad tenant, but all, they need, all the tenant actually needed was, it was respect. That might sound, you know, quite simple, and it is simple, and in my experience, simple makes money. So test this on your viewings if you have tenants in situ. So that's one way. Uh, if you've got a tenant where you know whatever reason they're not going to pay rent, you remember there is an eviction process, and there's a timeline for that eviction. And what we do at Premier Property in that instance, which is last case resort. If you have to evict them, then you start that process. And what we do is we factor in any expenses alongside that, such as mortgage payments that need to be paid and so on, you know, the actual fees for evicting the tenants. So if that happens on the odd occasion, then what we do is we'll, we will put that into as a business, because remember you're in business. So we will factor that in, discount it from the property price. So you get a discounted property, factor in any costs to, to unfortunately having to evict the tenant. And what you've got then, as soon as that tenant's gone, is a you know a property that you bought at a discount, where you can you know uh, get a new tenant in um, who's going to treat it like home, who's going to pay you on rent on time, and they have a home, you have a business. So that's what you can do with uh, naughty tenants, tenants that are not paying you. Now, if you've got a tenant in situ, Catherine, that is paying you rent and you know, they're treating like their home, the first thing I say to them is, be rest assured that when we buy this property, provided, and we'll make it crystal clear, provided the rent is on time and the rent is, it has been paid, there's no arrears, we are happy for you to continue to stay here and please, this is your home. Please treat it like your home. Now, you know, because if you can imagine, you know, being in the shoes of a tenant, where the landlord's selling the property, they've got uncertainty. They don't know if they've got to move or not move. They don't know when the sale's going to happen. You know, you kind of create a problem for that tenant. That tenant feels that they've got a problem with the seller, right? So if you can come in and be that person, just relieves them from that, and people will honour you. You know, they'll they'll work with you. Their rent will be paid on time. I mean, we have tenants, you know, like that where you know if the rent hasn't been paid or there's a reason why the uh, the the rent hasn't been paid, they'll call us up, they'll call our office and they'll tell us, oh, you know, um, local housing allowance is being dealt with, uh, benefits um, uh, has been delayed slightly, be rest assured, I'm going to be down at the council um, and um, we'll sort that out and I will let you know ASAP, Cam. They say that, you know, we've got long-standing talents, people like William, for example, comes to mind, he does that, if ever there's an issue. Um, why? Because we respect them and we'll allow them to treat their place like their home, which it is. So if you can be that person, then you will find that tenants in situ can be absolutely fantastic because at the end of the day, Catherine, you know, you, if you're listening here, team, you know, if you're, you've got tenants where you think, oh, should I buy a property with a tenant in it? Well, if they're paying the rent, like what I say, if they are treating it like their home, then absolutely I, we at Premier, we keep them. We keep them there and we let them enjoy their home because that's what it is and we have a business. So Catherine, hope that answered your question there. So we've discussed both types of tenants, the naughty ones and the good ones. And we've also discussed the ones that were in the middle which were naughty, which you can be bringing in to be good again just by respecting. I do love these questions. I do love this uh, Q&A and I hope you do enjoy these answers because all I'm sharing with you is exactly what we do at Premier Property day in, day out. And if you are enjoying these questions uh, and the answers to these questions and you've got questions, then feel free to join us. Uh, this is on a weekly basis 
and like what I say, if you're watching it on YouTube, just at the bottom of this, uh, you know, uh, this video here, you know, there's that comment box. So feel free to comment if you've got any questions of yourselves, and there's no silly question. Feel free to ask, and I will do my 100% best to assist you on a weekly basis, and we'll keep this on as long as you want this to be uh, keeping on. So uh, hope you enjoyed today, and uh, you know, subscribe, click the bell icon. And I will see you on the next video. This is Cam Devady helping you take your property investing to the next level. See you soon.